With the release of MPC 2.2, you no longer need to use MPC hardware in order to use the software. Software sold separately. Check your local distributors for more information. This is Masada from TheCycleKit.com. MPC 2.2 adds MIDI Learn Global. The desktop software can now be controlled by external controller. MIDI Learn Project parameters can now be controlled by external MIDI controllers. A new humanized feature for your MIDI events. A new generate random events. And bug fixes and stability enhancements. MPC 2.2 includes a few new features. Some I think y'all will like. All right, feature number one. I've been waiting for this for a long time. Humanize. All right, so now you can use your MPC program material, add this, and your material won't have that robotic feel that's attributed to a lot of digital programs or DOS. Under this new feature, we have new parameters. One, humanize time. This will basically control the amount of the effect. Experiment. You may find something you like. Some other additional parameters, eagerness, and as you move your adjustment, it'll give you these little details or descriptions. Length parameter, because humans don't play everything at a set length, so this would basically add a variance or a randomness to your, to your note length. Also, you can also humanize your velocity, so. This will give you a natural feel, a natural velocity. As previously stated, 2.2 also added in a new feature called Generate Random Events. Now what this feature is, is something a little different. This basically generates random notes. Uh, this can be good for if you're stuck, you can just use it to start out an idea. I use it for percussions, to generate random percussions. You have two options here. You have drum events and you have melodic events. Melodic events of course would be for your keyboards, your VSTs, your drum events. You would use that for your drums or your percussions. You can affect the pattern length. You can set it to whatever length you want it to be. The note length or its quantization. Lastly, you have the rhythm variation and density. In addition, under generate random events, you can also select the key you want to be or what scale you want it to be in. That's pretty cool. The big feature of MPC 2.2, you can now use external MIDI controllers to control the MPC software, such as a Native Instruments, Complete Control, Akai Advance, Machine, an MPK, a LPD, Novation, Elise's Keyboard. So you're going to access that by this new icon in a browser or Control Shift plus L. You can assign things here in the browser. You have two parameters, Global and Project. As you can see, I have parameters already programmed in here. I'm using my Akai MIDI Mix to control the mixer of the MPC software and MPC in standalone mode. Notice how I can control the mixer functions of my MPC software with my Akai MIDI Mix. I can control my solo, mutes, and my pan. Warning, this is my opinion. The MPC X comes with dedicated buttons and cue links, but the MPC Live comes with far fewer. So, in my opinion, MIDI Learned is extremely beneficial for the MPC Live. It's portable, you can take your portable gear along with you and control all the parameters that the MPC Live doesn't have a dedicated button for. It's ideal. MPC also improved the template feature of the MPC. One reason why this is important is because now when you create a MIDI Learn, file, you can take that file that you created in software and migrate it over to standalone mode so you can use all your predefined parameters or setups and take them on the go. So briefly I'll show you how I'll do that. Notice in standalone mode you have a new grayed out section called use a template. So how do we get that to work? I'll show you. Okay so after you create your MIDI learn files inside of the MPC software, you're going to go into your C drive and get those files so we can drag them over to the MPCX or the MPC Live. Go to your program data, you're gonna find the MPC, the archive folder. You're gonna go to the MPC folder, you're gonna go to the MIDI Learn folder, and whatever you name that program, your data inside of MPC, 
uh, software is going to be called that mine. It's called MIDI Mix, for the Akai MIDI Mix, and one for my MPC Live. So when I take it on the go. All right, I'm going to take those files. I'm going to take these. I'm going to copy them. Okay, and I'm going to place those on my desktop, or I'm going to just open up the MPC X in my case, and I'm going to basically drag those in or copy and paste those in here like that. Now to assign that, I have to go into Preference menu, have to press the cog, go to the Auto Save Preference, find where you put the file on your MPC X alive, select it. Make sure it's highlighted. Make sure it's named. Double click it. Select it. Go back to controller mode. We'll go back into standalone mode to activate the function. As you can see here, the user template is now highlighted. All right, so as you can see here, I'm going to, this is my mute button. I have this button assigned to the mute. I have this button here assigned to the solo. I press it, the solo comes on. Right, so let's see, let's go into a channel mixer and I'll show you that now I have the fader itself assigned. All right, and you can see here, I also have the pan assigned. cool right so let's take my complete control make two and map it to the MPC software when I make beats a lot of times I like to audition them in different keys so what we're going to do we're going to map one of the knobs to the master transpose of the MPC software I go to global I select sequence parameters I press learn I turn the knob on my complete control. It's just that simple. Now when I unpress learn and press enable, I can now adjust the parameter. Again, this works with any MIDI controller. Let's try to program another parameter, this time with my Kai MIDI mix. I'm going to take this knob here and assign it a parameter. I'll assign it to a send. Let's press this tab here. That's going to create an empty column. Let's go here, and this will reveal a drop down. We have none MIDI track, different MIDI tracks. It's going to come up based on how many MIDI tracks you have. Let's move this up so you can see the uh, drop down clearly. MIDI tracks, audio tracks, program, the individual pads, return, submix, master. I'm just going to map this knob here to my return. I'm going to select that, press on learn, turn a knob, unselect learned, and now we're going to check into our mixer, and as you can see it's mapped. I turn a knob, the fader moves. And we now have control of my return. Pretty simple, right? Okay, so what I want to show you now is how I set up my Kai MIDI mix to control the MPC software. I'm going to go through and demonstrate at least one channel with you guys. So I went into project mode. I select this little plus sign here. And now I press this about four times because each time I'm going to be affecting about four different parameters per channel. And that's going to be like volume, solo, mute, pan. So you gotta make sure that your MIDI tracks are all the same. So say if you have eight MIDI tracks, you're gonna make sure that each one of those four columns are gonna line up to MIDI track one. So you wanna make sure, like I said, that these are all on MIDI track one or the first track, however you decide to do this. Each one of these four columns are gonna control a different parameter. This one will be volume. Next one would be pan, it's going to be mute, and the next after that is going to be solo. Press learn, and you want to touch the hardware corresponding to whatever 
parameter you want to affect it. I'll move that up and down, move it slightly. And as you notice, it's now assigned an assessment or a property. Now the next one is pan, so I'm going to turn my pan knob and that's assigned. I'm going to press the mute button and now that's assigned. I'm going to press the next one and it's going to be for solo. Uh, here's something else that's going to be important. Check out this uh, drop down here. You're going to have to select toggle for both solo and mute. If not, the buttons won't stay affixed when you press them. Example, notice how I press these buttons and a button doesn't stay lit. It's because I didn't select toggle. So I have to go into column and press toggle for both solo and mute if you desire that traditional workflow that is. And from this point, all you have to do is just repeat that same process for each channel. All right, let's test out what we got. Our mute's working. Our pan is working. Our fade is working. Okay, now I'm going to show you what I just did in the software in the hardware standalone. Go into standalone mode, go into channel mixer, go to MIDI tracks, double click on eight tracks. What this does is create MIDI tracks. So as you're using the MIDI learn functionality, this makes assigning parameters to those tracks a lot easier. We're just going to use eight tracks for this project. Go press menu, MIDI control, press MIDI learn. Just like in the software you have a little plus sign, we're going to press the find the source, MIDI track 1, target, mixer, and we want to do volume. You go to my archive MIDI mix, press learn, touch the fader, and as you notice, the parameter is recorded. Press the plus sign again, press the source for MIDI track 1. We want the same MIDI track. We want to control volume, mute, pan, solo. My target is going to be mixer, pan. This time we're going to record pan. I'm going to touch the pan knob. And as you can see, it's recorded. We're going to press the plus sign again, and so on and so forth. So again, this is going to be MIDI track one. We press the MIDI button. We go to mixer, we go to mute. And we're going to press the mute button. Under type, we have to press toggle, just like in the software. Now we're going to press the plus button one more time. Go to source, MIDI track, target, mixer, solo. Press the solo button. And we see that it's now programmed in. Now press on toggle. Take off MIDI learn. Make sure everything is enabled. And go to the channel mixer. Now as you can see, volume is now being affected. Controlled by the Akai MIDI mix. My mutes are working. My solo is working. And let's try out the pan. And the pan is working. Very simple. All right, I just want to give you a demo of my setup. This ain't a real beat. Ain't one of my better beats, all right? <laughs> just messing around. Just a demo. All right, let's just drag in a sample. I want to show you guys how I can use my Akai MIDI mix to control the sample editing functions of an MPC Live. I'm going to just drag in any type of sample. doesn't matter. Okay, let's go to sample edit. Now we're going to edit this off. We're going to use the Akai MIDI mix. As you can see, I can edit the end. I also have my complete control uh, set up to edit samples. I can edit the front 
or the rear of a sample. Now here I'm going to use the uh, MIDI mix to edit a sample. I can I can zoom. I can edit the front. I would advise that you definitely update to MPC 2.2, especially if you have an MPC Touch or MPC Live. Get you a nice controller and control all those features that you normally can't with an MPC Live or Touch. And if you have an MPC X, get it because you want even more control. The software is now sold separately, so you can use it with anything, machine, releases, whatever. It'll work. Me, I'm a throwback guy. I like faders, I like knobs, I like buttons. I like that tactile feel. MIDI Learn brings that back. These things are all important for me. And if that's what you like too, you might be like me. Peace.